All right. Now, today we're going to do uh, modeling uh, on a periodic flow and heat transfer. Yeah. So, uh, why we need to focus on uh, periodic flow and heat transfer? Because uh, in our industry, um, we have uh, steam generation in the boiler and even aircon, uh, inside the aircon. So, we can um, um, simulate the heat transfer for all these uh, devices. Yeah. So uh, in our system, um, we will model a bank of tubes containing a flowing fluid at one temperature that is immersed in the second fluid cross flow in the different temperature. And both water, in this case, uh, in both fluid inside the tube is uh, water, and the flow is classified as laminar and steady, with Reynolds number approximately 100. Uh, the mass flow rate of the cross flow is known and the model is used to predict the flow and temperature field that uh, result from the uh, convective heat transfer. So this tutorial, we're going to uh, demonstrate how to use ANSYS to create a periodic zone. We're going to define the mass flow rate and then we're going to uh, model the heat transfer with a specified temperature and bounding condition. And then we're going to calculate a solution using a, a pressure base and activate the pseudo transient and couplet solver. And uh, we're going to show you how to plot temperature profile at a specific ISO surface. So this is our uh, problem description. So let's say you're, you have a, a, a flow flowing from, the, from left to right, and you have uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have five tubes that are flowing with water uh, coming out from the screen. So you have a cross uh, heat transfer here. So one, one flow is from the left to right, and one flow is from all these five uh, tube, cylindrical tube, uh, out uh, to the screen. Eh? So uh, the diameter uh, of all these are 0.5 mit, uh, cm, and the temperature of the wall here of this uh, tube, small tube here, is 400 Kelvin. And the mass flow rate that go into this control volume here, our cal calculation domain, is uh, 0 0.05 kilogram per second. So uh, the size of the domain is 1 cm in uh, uh, y direction. And then we have a 4 cm in x direction. So later you will see that our model, we will model uh, a symmetry plane um, in a 2D case. So uh, one, we, we will import uh, one mesh file in a size of 4 cm times uh, 1 cm here. Yeah. So then after that, we do setting. After setting, we will duplicate this single domain into um, into uh, three more. Huh? So we can create this uh, five uh, cylinder. And the uh, parameter for the water that go into, that, that go through this uh, small tube here is 998.2 kilogram over mit, uh, meter cube. The vis uh, viscosity is given, the CP is given, uh, the mu is given, the CP is given, and the K is given also. So later we need to key in all this value into the uh, ANSYS. And uh, we have the temperature, two type of temperature in this case. One is from the flow, number one is from the left to right. The temperature of the, the, the water from left to right uh, labeled as t buck, which is equal to 300K. And then uh, the temperature of the wall of the cylinder, this five uh, small cylinder tube here, the, the temperature for the wall is 400 Kelvin, uh, 400 Kelvin. So later we're going to define the temperature of this wall and temperature of this wall. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yep. So the rest I think you can read from the slide here. Um, so again, uh, since we are having a symmetry cases, um, so only this small portion we will model in our domain. Yeah and we will duplicate this one in uh, a few steps here. Okay, so this is uh, our scenario here. And uh, 
just give you an idea what, what it's going to do is that uh, we're going to uh, set up uh, this individual model here. Yeah, we're going to set up this uh, control volume, this uh, small domain here. After we do all the setup, then we're going to mirror this, this model so that you can generate uh, these uh, five small tube inside the computation domain. Then we can go ahead and uh, run the simulation, uh, the analysis, and we plot the, the results, uh, put in the results. And after that, we, we can show the temperature at three location. And to plot the temperature of three location, we need to generate the, the three ISO surface. So later, we will, we will set uh, three ISO surface. The first ISO surface is at the X distance of 1 cm from from uh, from this reference uh, location uh, which is uh, later you will key in uh, 0 0.01 meter huh? we will use meter in our simulation so later you will you will key in 0 0.01 meter for the first iso surface then we create the second iso surface and then the third iso surface then we will project the temperature contour uh, or, or temperature plot uh, on this uh, tree uh, three axes here. Okay, so before you, we start, you need to go to the Moodle and uh, download the tubebank.mesh file, dot .mesh file. All right, then we will go ahead and uh, check the mess as usual. Okay, let's start our uh, tutorial. So um, to simulate this one, we need to um, we need to use a Fluent as usual. So go ahead and go to analysis system here, and then we go to Fluent, double click Fluent, and oh, and then we go ahead, you can rename uh, this uh, system, yeah. But anyway, uh, we just go ahead and uh, uh, save our project first. So we're going to save our projects uh, somewhere, yeah, in your hard disk. So I'm going to pick, uh, so I'm going to save this one as a uh, uh, heat transfer, right? Heat transfer, heat transfer, yeah. Okay, save. All right, so uh, then we can uh, start our fluent. So go set up. Okay, in this case, we're going to run a 2D because it's a symmetric case. So we're going to click 2D and then we're going to use a single precision and zeros processing option and make sure uh, you display the mesh after reading here. And then click OK. Then we arrive at the Fluent uh, Solver uh, machine here. So we need to import the, the mesh file into this here. So go to File and then you import the mesh that you download from the Moodle. So let me find uh, the demo file. Okay. This file, tubebank.mesh file. So you are seeing uh, something like this uh, in your window mesh here. Yeah. So you need to check the, the mesh property here. So click the check button. And then once you check, uh, check the mesh, what you need to look at is the minimum volume, this one. Make sure you're having a positive value. Yeah. If you get a negative value, it means something wrong in the uh, mesh. Uh, the, the, the main purpose we click check is to check that we have a minimum uh, volume of a positive value. Okay, then we're going to scale uh, the mesh here according to put into CM for our convenience. So we're uh, going to scale, so mesh, uh, set up domain ribbon here, mesh, scale. So we're going to scale our, our mesh here. So we're going to select a mesh was created in we're going to put because in the window here you see it's in meter so we need to scale it to cm yeah we're going to scale it to cm then we click scale so our maximum size minimum from zero maximum is 0 0.4 so what does it mean it means our x direction from zero to uh, 4 cm here so which is correct uh, in meter. And then the height of our Y here is zero 
until uh, 1 cm, so it's 0 0.01 meter. So we disagree with our uh, uh, photo or uh, agree with our problem statement just now. Okay, one, you click the scale, then uh, close this one. All right, then after that, uh, always remember to, after you do something with the mesh, you always need to go and uh, check again. Click the check again, and then go to the uh, console here again, check the minimum value, yeah? Make sure you always have a positive value for uh, this column. Huh? For minimum volume, you, you need to always get a positive uh, number. Yep, okay. Then uh, we can uh, look a little bit on the mesh itself. So you can see that um, at the uh, curvature here, at the round shape here, see, there's a, there's a, there's a two type of uh, mesh uh, cell here. One is quadrilateral cell, which is, you see over here, this is a quadrilateral cell, or this. It is suitable for uh, a round shape uh, object. And then um, as you move further, you'll see that we change the mass into uh, triangular. Yeah, into triangular. So uh, the combination of uh, quadrilateral and triangular, uh, this set we call it uh, hybrid mesh, uh, hybrid mesh. So, uh, okay, so um, quadrilateral, again, quadrilateral cell provide a better uh, resolution for of the, the viscous gradient, it, it create a better viscous gradient uh, near the tube wall. This is this is here. Huh? So if you have a round body, then we recommend you to use quadrilateral uh, cell. And the remainder uh, domain was filled with a triangular cell uh, for convenience. Yeah, for convenience because uh, we need to focus on uh, uh, the tube here. All right. Now, um, you can check information on the cell here by just right click. For example, I right click here, you will see that uh, all these positions will come out, uh, surface ID, name, and so on, yeah? So you can check uh, what is the, for example, I want to check what is this line represent. So it will tell you that this is uh, uh, ID 24, yeah? And so on, yeah? Position where and all this. So later we we need to uh, do some uh, setting about uh, our object here. So we zoom fit here. So uh, the next step we're going to create a periodic zone. So we will create uh, uh, two zone. One is uh, inlet, which is um, if you go to boundary condition here, uh, wall number nine here is our inlet. Then our outflow or outlet is wall number 12, this is here. So we're going to do setting for wall number nine and wall number 12. Again, wall number nine is our input. Uh, wall 12 is our output. So we need to create a, a periodic zone here. Yeah. So how are we going to do it? We're going to use a, a text here. So we need to do something with the text here on, uh, inside the console. So what you did is you move your mouse here and then you press enter. Then you will see something, uh, uh, there's a triangular come out here. Then I want you to type mesh slash modified hyphen, modified zone, zones slash, we're going to make our periodic, make periodic, periodic, uh, make periodic, okay, max, make periodic here, then you press enter. So your prompt to uh, create a periodic zone uh, one. So we're going to cre create periodic zone number nine, which is our input, our inlet. Uh, so here, we need to create a periodic zone, uh, enter number nine, go to uh, zone number nine, to create the periodic uh, zone, enter. Shallow zone, shallow zone, uh, uh, enter 12. 12 is our outflow. All right, then enter. So it asks you that uh, rotational periodic, uh, yes or no? The answer is no. We don't need uh, the uh, rotational uh, uh, transition. So press, uh, type in no, then enter. Uh, create a periodic zone. 
Answer is yes, of course. Enter. Auto detect transition vector. Yes, we need uh, auto detect. And then you will see that um, they have a, a 12 zone deleted and then you created a, a periodic zone. Yeah. Okay, so we have done uh, uh, creating the periodic zone. So if you wonder what I'm trying to type now is uh, I'm, uh, I'm type in this text, yeah? mesh slash modified hyphen zones slash met uh, hyphen periodic, right? And then the detail, you can uh, go back to the video and see it again. Huh? All right, back to the ANSYS again. Oh, oh, back to the ANSYS uh, again. So the next one, we're going to uh, uh, do some general setting. So go to set up uh, physics here. So we're going to use steady uh, pressure base type and uh, absolute here. Uh, then we go to our model. So go to our model here. So model here, we're going to activate our energy. So go here, right click on the energy. Uh, once you're on energy, means uh, you're going to mod uh, you're going to uh, run the heat transfer. Yeah. So the next one, after you've done the model, you're going to boundary condition uh, material. Huh? So material, we need to create uh, the material based on the property given. So we go to setup material under fluid. We need to okay. Uh, okay, I expand this one. All right, so fluid. Fluid, yeah. Right click new. All right, so we create a material for our database here. So we go to a fluent database here. Then we're going to look for water, yeah. We're going to look for water because here you see the tree here we don't have water so we need to go and uh, find water once you click water um the rest parameter we agree with the default uh, water property here then after that you click uh, copy and then you close it yeah so now we have a uh, water over here already yeah, so we close it. Yeah, so we have uh, water property uh, inside the material here already. The next one, uh, we go to zone, cell zone here. So we need to set up for our cell zone. So go to cell zone here, and then there's a float 16 here. So float 16, right click, edit. So we need to uh, look at the property over here. So here, um, we need to change the material for our float. It's not air. We are simulating water. So go to material name here, drop down and uh, choose water liquid that we just uh, import from the database. Yeah. So after that, click OK. So our float is using uh, water. So if you're not sure, just go there and check again. All right. So after that, we're going to do our set up our periodic uh, condition. So how to set up our periodic condition is under our bounding condition here. So we're going to uh, periodic uh, nine, uh, then right click, open your edit. Okay, periodic nine. Going to do, uh, okay. So you just double tick bounding condition here, periodic nine. Then you go to, uh, Okay, then you go to periodic condition here. Yeah, click, uh, you click uh, periodic nine and then click the periodic condition. So periodic condition uh, setup window will come out here. So we need to, uh, because we are given the mass flow, so we type in the mass flow, select mass flow uh, here, and then we are going in X direction. This is X direction. Y direction, X direction to the right. So one, Z, right, one and zero, yeah. And then we key in the mass row, 0 0.05, right. And then, yeah, the rest is fine. 
So again, is when you come to your assignment or test or exam. So uh, when you're given the mass flow rate to simulate a heat transfer case, uh, remember, uh, especially when it comes to periodic question, uh, periodic condition question, uh, you need to come here and change the mass flow rate according to the question uh, given parameter. Okay, then let me check. Uh, okay, everything seems okay. Click okay. So we have set up the periodic condition for number nine. And then we're going to set up a uh, wall 21 here. So wall, wall 21, um, need to set up a uh, wall 21. Uh, wall 21, where is wall 21? Wall 21 is uh, bottom of the wall. It's D here, this one. Yeah, this is a uh, wall 21, yeah? This is a tube surface here. So wall 21 is this one. So we need to uh, do some boundary condition setup for the tube here. So remember, we have a 400 Kelvin temperature here. So we need to set up. So go to wall 21 and then click edit. So wall 21 is the wall bottom. So just to clarify, uh, wall bottom. Uh, wall bottom. And the fluid is correct. Work 16, correct. We're going to set up a uh, thermal then temperature, then key in the 400 Kelvin as uh, we see in the problem statement just now. Yep, so click OK. So we're done for uh, 21 and then we're going to set up this, this wall also. This wall is given 400 also. The location of this wall is uh, uh, Wall number three, which is here, this one. So wall number three, right click. If I'm not right click, go here, bottom, edit. So it again, go to change, go thermal. Or maybe we change the name. So the name is uh, wall top. Wall top. Wall top means here, huh? This is the top portion, yeah? Wall top and change the uh, temperature to 400 yeah 400 and then click ok so because the water is flowing from the from the left to right that one is uh, at the uh, if you look at the uh, problem statement here so you see that uh, the water is coming in 300 so we are setting just now what we do is we setting this wall at 400 kelvin and then we set up another wall for 400 Kelvin here. So we have two types of temperature here. Okay, now once we done the boundary condition for uh, the wall over here, the uh, the bottom and the top here, yeah, uh, change to 400 Kelvin. The next one, we're going to uh, do the solution already. So go to uh, solving, then uh, we're going to do uh, method, yeah, solving method, or you can just go here, solution method, same. Huh? So uh, we're going to use uh, pressure velocity coupling and scheme coupled. And we're going to use a second order, second order, second order for energy, momentum, and pressure. And again, we are considering a, a pseudo transient process. Yep. Now, pseudo transients, uh, when the option, uh, why, why we need, to, why, why we activate or why do we use a pseudo transient is because uh, uh, pseudo transient algorithm uh, in this uh, coupled uh, pressure based solver, um, it is very effective to um, add an uh, unsteady terms to the solution equation in order to improve the stability and convergence of the behavior, right? So it's to just to improve the stability and convergence later on. Yep. Okay, so the next one, we need to go to control. So once you set up the, the method here, go to control. So control here is more on the relaxation factor. So um, you can come here and change according to the convergence con condition. Yeah. So in, in, in some case, the default uh, uh, pseudo transient explicit relaxation factor um, may need to reduce uh, in order to prevent uh, oscillation in the residuals value. 
or stabilization of the residual value above the convergence criteria. So you come here to, to reduce the value if you're not able to reach a convergence. Right? All right, so the next one, uh, we will remain this one. Uh, all this, uh, we won't change our election factor here. Just, just to show you uh, where, where, is, where can you find an election factor. Uh, the next one, we're going to set up our residues already. Yep, so go to uh, solving, uh, report residues. And remember to check the plot here. Yep. So in this case, we will reframe all the absolute uh, convergence criteria here. Then, uh, wait, okay. Then after that, we're going to initiate the, the, the hybrid uh, initialization. So go to initialization, double click this one, and then hybrid initialization. Click initialize. So in console here, you'll see hybrid uh, initialization is done. Uh, after that, we're going to patch. Uh, we're going to patch the the float zone with the upstream temperature value. Yeah. So we're going to patch it because we have two types of temperature here. Here is 400, and then the the, the upstream from the left to right is a uh, is a uh, different temperature. So we need to patch the the uh, the temperature over here. So how you do the patching? Yeah. So you go to um, you click the patch button. So it will ask you what to patch, what what to what to uh, include it in the calculation. So we go and choose the temperature, and you know that the, the flow from the left to right is uh, 300 Kelvin, key in 300, and then we're going to patch to our float here. Yep. Um, then click patch. Once we've done it, uh, we can close. So you already, you already uh, set up uh, the temperature, the flow from the left to right, 300. And then the tube is 400, 400 over here. And then you're ready for the uh, uh, analysis already. So before you run for analysis, we, uh, it's, bad, it's always good practice to uh, save the case file. So again, I go to my uh, working exercise file here. So I just type in, uh, cube bank uh, dot cas dot cz again why i use the dot cz because i asked i want to ask the, the software to help me to compress the the file for me right without dot cz the, the computer will just give you a raw file without compress yep uh dot cz is just to reduce the, the file size uh, in your hard, hard disk yeah click okay all right so once we save the case file going to run the calculation. So go to solving, advance, and then um, iteration, we're going to run uh, 350 for this case, um, and then calculate. So the computer is going to run, and it is expected to run to get a uh, convergence quite, quite quick. So you can see here from the console here, you see the solution, uh, is converged at uh, iteration of 113, 113. So quite fast and click OK. All right, then after we have the data already, uh, we will again uh, save the case file and uh, data. I'm going to export case and data. Again, I like to go to my working file. And then I'm going to uh, put my file, um, cube bank.cas.gz uh, and click OK. We're going to, we're going to uh, save the data and the case file. Yeah. So the next one is going to look at our result already. So after that, um, go to post processing. And then uh, the first thing we want to see is our uh, contour of our static pressure. So we go to post processing. Then go to graphic, under contour, you go to edit. So the first thing you want to see is uh, the pressure contour. So pressure, static, and make sure you tick the field. You'll feel the, the space inside the graph there. Um, and then 
Um, okay, the rest is just press display. So you, if you don't see anything, you just press the, the, the fit button here. So maybe the, the, the object is very small. So, uh, okay, so this is the contour that uh, our pressure contour. So in Pascal, you see, you can see that the maximum pressure is uh, 800, 828, uh, 828 Pascal at this region, at this region, right? The flow come from here, hit this, uh, the front side of the cylinder tube here. So the pressure is high and then it's getting low over here. Uh, the pressure is negative here, yeah? So these are the behavior that we are observing from the simulation over here. Um, uh, what else? Huh? And you can um, always save this file for your report. So again, go to left. You can uh, you can uh, go to here, right? Save picture. Click save picture, and then you select format you want and click save. So go to the folder that you want to save there, right? In this case, uh, I don't want to save. Yeah, that I'm just showing you. The next one, we're going to copy these uh, results uh, so that we are having the, the five tube that we see just now. So you go to uh, run the uh, view in symmetry cases, right? How we copy this one, yeah? So I'm going to show you. So the next steps, you go to viewing and then go to views here. Uh, viewing, display, view, click this one. And then um, we're going to uh, select um, all mirror planes here. So symmetry 18, 13, 11, 24. Where, where is all this line? Is this line here, 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 here. There are four symmetry planes here. So symmetry 18, uh, 13, uh, 11, 24. So if you can check from the mesh file, uh, where is all this location by just go there and right click. Huh? So we're going to mirror uh, this object on all this symmetry plane over here. Okay, then the next one, um, you just uh, click apply. Yeah. So when you click apply, you'll see that uh, you are copying um, all these uh, uh, mirror object, uh, mirror image into uh, all these uh, uh, zones just now. Okay. All right. Just now we are having uh, all these things. Then we mirror it again. Okay. Now, um, need to take note is that um, what we're seeing here is a pressure contour. Uh, do not include the linear pressure gradient compute uh, by the solver. So uh, the contour that you see here is a periodic at the uh, inlet and, and outflow of the boundaries. Yeah. So again, the contour that you're seeing here is a, a periodic at inlet and outflow boundaries. The next one we're going to see is the contour of the static uh, temperature. So we're going to see contour of our temperature. So go to uh, post-processing, graphic, and contour, edit. So now we're going to see uh, static temperature. So you go to the contour here, choose temperature, and static temperature, um, the rest, you, uh, fill, photo range, and so on. Then you just uh, click uh, display. So again, you are seeing there's a static temperature in Kelvin. So you can see that um, uh, the cooler uh, water from the left to right, cooler water is, is 300 Kelvin. Uh, go into the domain and we have the cylinder tube here that have a 400 Kelvin here. So you see the red color is 400. And you are seeing that there is a mixture of temperature uh, between the cold water and uh, the, the hot tube here. So you're seeing there's a mixture of temperature. We disagree with our hypothesis, which is a good sign. Yep. Okay, then we close this one. Um, okay, and you can see that um, the hotter fluid is confined to the near wall uh, and wake region over here, yeah? So... And we have a narrow stream of cooler fluid as it go through uh, between the, the two hot tube here. 
you can see the blue line here, yeah? very narrow uh, stream of cooler fluid here. The next one, you're going to see velocity vector of our flow. So how do we uh, assess the vector information? Post processing, under graphic, there's a vector there. Then click edit. So you're going to see a velocity vector. So in this case, uh, everything is set up correctly. Um, the only thing is that uh, because I want to view the, the scale a bit larger, so change the scale to maybe two, then click display. So you'll see um, the scale is, is in two. If this size is too small for you, you can come here and uh, change it to a bigger scale if you want. Yeah, Just increase to maybe uh, four, five, maybe 10, and so on. Yep. So this is how you change the size of the arrow. Yep. Okay, so you can see from the velocity magnitude here, the maximum is on top and bottom of the hot tube here. Yeah. And there's a, uh, there's a slow flow of uh, velocity after the tube here. Okay. All right. So this uh, is the velocity information. Um, The next one, yeah, maybe you can zoom in here and you can see the contour of the, you can, you can select this maybe here and then you can see the, the high velocity of the uh, upper cylinder here. The next one, you're going to create uh, a plot of our uh, ISO surface. So just now I've just briefed you. They're going to create three ISO surface. One is this line. On this line and this line, there are three isosurface here. So you're going to create a three isosurface and plot the temperature profile. So how do we set up the isosurface? So go to setup domain and then go to surface and then create. Then go to select isosurface. So isosurface here, we're going to select mesh and we're going to uh, use X coordinate. And we'll enter uh, here, ISO value here. We're going to enter 0 0.01. Uh, 0 0.01 from X axis. Yeah. So the first ISO surface is uh, we're referring to X coordinate uh, with a distance of uh, 0 0.01 or 1 cm from the left. Yep. And then we enter the name here. Surface name here, we name as S equal 0 0.01 meter. Then we create uh, one ISO surface. We can continue this one with the second ISO surface with this the value of 0.2. And then we change the name to uh, x equals 0 0.02 meter. Then click create. And then create the third ISO uh, surface, 0 0.03. And then change the name x equal 0 0.03 meter then click create so how do you know you already correct you go to manage here so you'll see that um, from here you are creating an iso surface over here you have uh, three surfaces uh, one is uh, 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.03 here so what are uh, all these value means okay close this one Close this one. Now, what are the order values there? So, just to recap uh, what I previewed just now. So, what we are trying, uh, what we are doing do is that um, we are creating uh, three ISO surface at uh, all this distance. So, just now we are referring to x uh, axis here. So, we have a 0 0.01 meter, 0 0.02 meter, 0 0.03 meter, and later we're going to see what are the temperature at all these uh, location. So back to the uh, fluent here. Okay, we're going to uh, show it into XY plot. So again, how to create XY plot. So go to post processing, go to plot XY plot, and then edit. And here we're going to um, change a little bit because uh, our X is constant and we are plotting what happened to our Y direction. 
what happened to our temperature in y direction. So we need to flip uh, this number. So since we are, we, are, we are focusing on y axis, just change your x to zero. And one means you ask the computer to focus on y axis. And then we're going to uh, plot our y axis as temperature. Yeah. So remember to come here to, to change. If not, it's going to plot pressure for you. Change to temperature, static temperature. And we're going to look at uh, three locations uh, there. Isosurface 1, 2, 3. We're going to look at uh, location 0 0.01 meter, 0 0.02 meter, and 0 0.03 meter. Okay. Then we're going to click the curve here. Yeah. Click curve. Wait for a while. Okay, so the curve property will uh, legend or setup will come up here. What does this uh, uh, curve mean? Huh? So since we are having a uh, three data here, we ask a computer to separate our data into a uh, different line and color. So the first line we're going to set up for 0 0.01 data. So uh, curve zero means the first curve. So we're going to change the uh, the symbol for our 0 0.01 meter uh, uh, temperature profile. So we're going to change this one to plus. Um, and then we're going to apply. And then after that, for the second location, we're going to increase the curve. So curve one means the second curve. And we're going to change this one to, maybe we use, uh, X, uh, X for this one and click apply. You can continue to change for the third one, eh? but in this case, I just uh, let it be default and close. So after that, um, you can you can go ahead and, and change for curve also, right? So. Uh, just now the curve is uh, one means the second one. Yeah, remember, uh, uh, curve one means the second data. So I will just go here and uh, change it a little bit. Increase the size of my X a little bit small. So I go here to change it to 0 0.5. Click apply, close. Yeah, so I done, I just click plot. So this is the, the data that I just showed you just now. So uh, from here, uh, the white color is 0 0.001 meter, uh, the distance. This is the temperature uh, for the position of uh, your Y position. Yep. So your Y position. So um, because your X is fixed, uh, so you, what, what difference is from the, uh, you can only move your position of your Y. So you look at the position from 0 to 0 0.1 means 1 cm. So you move from the top of the surface until the bottom of the surface. So you can plot the graph um, depending on the tree location there. So although, don't worry about the, the, the size of the text here. So when you save the, the file, uh, when you save the file in, as for your report, so let's say I press the save picture uh, and then I, I click the preview. Okay, so once you click the preview, uh, this graph will come out. So you see the legend here, actually uh, the text will not uh, overlap when you save it, yeah? So don't worry about that one. Then, uh, yeah, so just now what we do is that we change for the 0.2 size, you see? The X, we change to point, uh, 0 0.5 there, just now, to increase the size of our plot. So number three, you can change the size, uh, the, the the, the curve uh, shape here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is how we do it for the uh, uh, static temperature in the Y uh, coordinate there. Okay, um, all right, so with this, I end the recording for uh, our periodic flow and heat transfer case. Yeah.